It's a model of chemical ecology that drives adaptive evolution via ecological, social, neurogenic, and sociocognitive niche construction. And the bottom line is that our food preferences and our preferences for other people are both conditioned in the same manner by associations with odors. Of course, it's food odors and food preferences, and then social odors determine our social preferences and also our sexual preferences. It's a model of systems biology that represents conservation of bottom-up organization and top-down activation via some very complicated thermodynamics of nutrient stress-induced and social stress-induced changes at the cellular level that translate the epigenetic landscape to the physical landscape of our DNA. What I've done is include examples uh, across species that show the epigenetic effects are the same in every species from microbes to man. And uh, it's very clear that our envi environmental drives for food acquisition and mate acquisition have evolved from nutrient uptake in microbes to that of pheromone-controlled socialization in insects. And my model takes that uh, from insects to mammalia to mammals via the same molecular mechanisms. What's primarily involved is associations of odors with olfactory receptor genes that are created via the exposure to different odors or pheromones. So you have examples of nutrient-dependent odor receptor induction uh, that Cross species and uh, what I've done is move from bacteria to nematodes where we have a single amino acid substitution creates differences in the ability to reproduce. So what uh, worms eat determines their pheromone production and therefore their uh, survival of that particular species. We have the same thing in insects where what they eat determines their neurogenic niche construction, where the nervous system develops based on food and the control of reproduction is based upon the pheromones of insects. That extends to mammals very easily via choice of nutrient for choline that's associated with a particular fishy odor in uh, uh, mice that's aversive to humans and rats. But we have examples of fish odor syndrome in humans that shows that the, the, the metabolism of the choline is affected by genetic changes uh, that make an example, a further example, out of a couple of human studies uh, that were recently reported back in January of this year uh, from research done at Harvard. So what we now have is two different studies that link substitution of the amino acid alanine for the amino acid valine. And what that shows is that a population, a human population, adaptively evolved in what is now central China during the past 30,000 years due to a change in climate that precipitated a change in the diet of this population that precipitated changes in sweat glands and in uh, uh, mammary tissue and also in teeth. And this was shown, those differences were shown by comparing the substitution in mice to the same changes that occurred. Again, it's due to a single nutrient dependent amino acid substitution that enables selection for differences in the thickness of hair, differences in the odor that's produced by sweat glands. Apocrine glands are scent producing glands. The eccrine glands are also contributing to factors to the amount of body odor that's produced. 
uh, all this is part of the, the glandular secretions are part of the thermoregulatory mechanisms at the organism level that allow us to cool down. Thermoregulation is also part of the immune system function that allows us to either fight off uh, infection using fever as a defense, or sometimes we succumb to the, uh, the damage by the infection.